case you are new here, we're growing up without borders. Welcome to our family vlog of our travels around the world. Today we are visiting Solitern, Switzerland. Come so as along. You, look at this. It's like we're entering a castle. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Look at this. There's a big, huge tower up there. And then this looks like we're going into the kingdom of Solitern. Go on in. Here. This is There's the... something really cool we're going to tell you about it in any minute. Okay. So they speak Swiss German here, and we are really close to the Jura Mountains, and we are on the Ari River. So. Okay, so something that we discovered that is very mysterious about Solitern is a special number. So their number 11 is very basically omnipresent all throughout the city. They have 11 chapels and churches, 11 fountains. Let me think of what else. There's 11 dials on their clock, not 12. Um, it took them 11 years to build the church and the stairs leading up to it, there's three times 11. Uh, the organ inside the church, you can, it's divisible by 11. There's also 11 museums here the facade is three by 11. The church tower is six by 11. So it's just like this amazing number 11 all throughout the city. The other thing is, is if you want, the tourism office does tours, but I think it's on the 11th day, 11th month at the 11th hour, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just joking about that part. I'm sure they do it all the time, but just thought it'd be funny to say that since it's all about the number 11. 11. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so the other thing is, is the Sola Turners, they even call their beer the Ulfi Bier, so like the 11th ale, or the 11 ale, so like, I don't know, I have no Let's idea where it all comes from. Off 11 times. <laughs> So this behind me is the train station here in Solitern. As you can see, you can get here from many other ways. You can take a boat here as well from Biel. I think it's a two hour boat ride, so it's quite a long ways. But um, this is the main train station here. So it's a small city, but um, I guess like every European city that we visit, because it has the old town, even though a city is big, it still has a small feel. A lot of people walking on the streets, and um, it's just really nice. A lot of the Swiss writers and authors call this place home, which is interesting. They have a lot of events. Some of the yearly events, what did yeah, we just find out? Yeah, they have Christmas markets, they have biking days. I guess they do biking, a literature. Like a big, huge event. Yeah, a literature, big... biking. And um, in February and early March, they even have a carnival, so. That looks like a lot of fun, all the costumes and stuff like that. So, and the architecture here, they to say, me, yeah, it's like an they say Italian it's like a, grace. Yeah, they say it's a blend between Italian grace. grace. No, they French said charm. French charm and German pragmatism. Oh, and guess what we just found? <gasps> it's a weapon store. Uh, I've seen this in such a. I always see that in South Africa. It's like literally handcuffs, pocket knives. Not sure what that's all about. <laughs> But yeah, so look at the style of the buildings here, just so you can see. So it's a Baroque architecture. You 
guys believe how old that clock is? It's so up above, it says from 1411. 1411. No. Oh yeah, 11, oh yeah, right. But it's unbelievable. And then 1545 is that spot in the middle. It's just unbelievable to think how old these things are and that they're so well preserved. It's just like everywhere you look, it's ancient. So it dates back to 426. What is... That is crazy. So this dates back to the Roman times, I guess. I'm looking for the clock with the 11 dials. This one up here has 12, so I still haven't found it, but we're on the hunt for it to see if we can show it to you. So I think the one of 11 must be in the 11th church. Yeah. So one thing Chloe was just noticing is that what? Basically, like something I also, also always love about Switzerland is that they have little building. It's not like they have these big skyscrapers in different cities where it's like, ah! Yeah, every city here must have a building code that they can't go above a certain height because yeah, all the buildings do. are, you know, they're quite small, which means when you're in their city centers, you don't feel kind of like, overwhelmed by tall huge buildings and a lot of times like when you're down those narrow streets in Europe if the streets are super narrow and the buildings would be so high you would feel like oh my gosh you would feel claustrophobic but because they're not so high you don't get that feeling right? and also um, I remember I forget which town they actually have a rule that you can't have high buildings more than like three levels yeah many many cities here right yeah the city center has these big towers like that which are circular and apparently it was to do with the defense. I don't really understand how or what, but maybe because they could see from each side. I don't know. But that tower over there on the stones, you can actually see faces. You'll have to come and discover and see for yourself. See, so this is like a, a tower here. And you can see here would have been one of the defenses where they could have shot out at the enemies coming in. Boom, 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 boom. So just because we can't get enough of the Swiss chocolate, we're gonna go visit another maison of chocolate, another chocolate house. There's and this too one, many. there's just too many here in Switzerland. This is Camille Bloch. That's how you say it. How do you it's, say it? It's practical because then you have your dessert everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna go check out this chocolate factory. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Twisting your arm to try it. Mm. Is it good, Oshavi? Oh, that's really good. <laughs> the pricing adults to come in is 15 francs students are 11 and children that are 6 to 16 are 8 francs this is the gift shop with all the yummy chocolate so one thing you can do that's not far away from Solitern it's about a 20 minute drive it's not far away but you literally go up the mountain road this crazy mountain road and it's called 
I'm going to say it wrong. Siltalk. Siltalk. So it's a zip lining and like, um, how do you call it, Julia? Like a park adventure, yeah, right? Yeah, like tree, yeah, rock climbing, zip lining, adventures in the trees. Yeah, we're going to go check it out. Look oh, at our look. shadows. Where it starts. I love nice. You can tell you're really in the forest when you see spiders on the web. Yeah, they're all the way there and it just did. It looks like a really fun one to do. Yeah, you can go, Angelique, if you want. One thing you're going to want to know is because when you come here, of course, you're going much higher. So down below is probably like, I don't know, 19 degrees, and up here is 13. So just FYI, when you're coming up, always remember, bring warm clothes. But it is like 7 something at night. Yeah, so. The uh, barbecue here, it looks really cool. Looks like my uncle had. Yeah. All right, so here we go. So right up here, we're at about 1,300 meters. You can see the city down below in the distance. And uh, they created a gondola that goes all the way up, or I guess it would be called uh, a cable car. In, in the past, they had a chairlift. And so this is one of their high points right here in the Jura Mountains. You can see behind me too, there's the um, Ari River. So you can kind of see how it all scrolls back that way. 